Yo, what is going on guys? Hess here. And I have a very special guest with us today. This is Seth Fowler and I'll link How's his going, information in the description. Um, we are in Long Beach at Complex Con right now mm -hmm. and uh, crazy thing ended up happening. I ended up bringing my Tokyo 5s to uh, Complex Con thinking I might be the only person rocking Tokyo 5s. And you were. Day two. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is this guy ended up winning these uh, from um, you guys will check out my my vlog I posted and you guys will see but he ended up winning these for free uh, Which was super rad. I was there for the entire thing and it was so rad to actually see you get them, man That's But sick. um, but yeah, so because of that like we have both of the shoes here and I was like Let's go ahead and do a collaboration video So he did a really cool detailed video on the Tokyo 5 on his channel. So go check that out um, and again the link in the description for that and then for my my channel We decided to go ahead and just do like a comparison between the two shoes since I had the samples and he had the um, Legitimate pair from the Zen app or whatever the heck. What is it called Zen? I don't Zen, know. I think fine Zen. They did. It was the amazing. That whole experience was so rad, but yeah um, But anyway, let's go ahead and let's get into this comparison Seth and like let's Sweet. start off with the upper So there's a couple things that are different what we've sort of noticed as we looked over the shoe is that even though the materials Seem to be the same. It's the same. It's they're both nubuck. Um, the the retail pair seems to have a slightly thicker nubuck, and I don't know if that means it's a higher quality nubuck. It feels a little bit softer, but I mean I always assume that samples have better materials on them. So I, maybe it's a more yeah. expensive or a more premium nubuck, and it just feels different. But what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean it's interesting that it's thicker. I actually uh, my buddy Paul uh, pointed this out to us, who's actually right there <laughs> in the room. But he uh, PJ ended up pointing this out, but it's actually different it's thicker this is a mm -hmm. thicker nubuck um, and you could tell that from right around the the ridge of the the toe box area and it's like a little bit more um, nappy yeah. so it has more of like a raw edge around his um, toe box the cut and mine is like super super like not like a raw edge but it's also noticeably thinner so that was the first thing we noticed that was different mm -hmm. one thing I want to point out though is this um, sample that I have which you guys have uh, dubbed and known these now as the yellow toe samples um, and per the perfect pair is actually the one the reason why you guys know these because if you guys saw his nice kicks video years ago um, He had the yellow toes and, and I'm one of the other people that actually has um, one of those But this is a look-see sample So the difference between this and a regular sample is they have a bunch of different samples made Before they decide which sample to get for like the final like go before the production and so the, you have the samples that are like exactly production mock-ups just early before they actually mass produce it to make sure that it's actually the one that they want to mass produce. But the look-see sample is ones where they're trying different things and they're trying different colors of materials and, and not just different colors, but different types of materials. Um, so all look-sees can be all sorts of different and that's primarily the reason why these are so different. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So the stitching on the sneaker is also a little bit different. Not the actual placement of the stitching, but the color of the stitching itself is kind of different, which I, I wouldn't have expected. Uh, the stitching on the sample pair seems to be a little bit lighter color and a little bit more vibrant. The stitching on my retail pair um, is, I, I was assuming they're trying to go for more of a matchy look with the with the Nubuck. Um, so it's a little bit duller yellow, it's a little bit less vibrant. Um, I feel like on the retail pair, you can definitely see the uh, the holes for the stitching a lot better than you can on the sample pair because the stitching also seems to be slightly, slightly thinner. Obviously, as I already mentioned, um, the other major difference is the yellow toe. Yeah. Obviously, black toe, yellow toe. Uh, as we move our way down to the midsole though, this is actually something that was surprising, and that's the coloring of uh, both of the uh, the fighter stripes or whatever these are called. And what are they called, fire? Shark teeth? Yeah, the no shark. shark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're called. <laughs> whatever they're called. So uh, the coloring of these are actually way, way different. So, Super different. Yeah, so my sample pair is like really, really bright and yeah. like less paint splatter. And yours definitely has like a, a duller, um, more, more uniform actually uh, to, the, to the actual shoe. And then it seems like there's a little bit more paint splatter on there, on, on his as well. And then, it's also true for the triangle on the other side. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, they're, they're both different right there too. Which one do you, I, honestly, I prefer, I obviously prefer the sample one because I like the color, the yellow color better. And also I like a little bit less paint splatter just cause this one sort of looks like, it almost looks like it's shaded. It almost looks like it's an even duller color because of like the crazy amount of splatter on the retail pair. Do you have a preference? I mean, honestly, I didn't even notice it until you look at them like next to each other, but this one is more uniform, like I said. So right. I actually, I prefer yours just because it has more of like a, an actual like matching look. This is a little bit more aggressive. It'd be like wearing like a blue shirt and like blue shoes but not having them, you know what yeah. I mean, go together. That's Fair what enough. it would feel. 
Fair to enough. me. So one thing that we noticed pretty much right off the bat when we saw these shoes together is that the tongue sizing is, is very, very different. The retail pair is pretty much, I wouldn't say it's flush, it's a little bit taller than the, uh, the ankle collar, but if you look at the sample pair, I mean, it's massive. like a, it's massive, yeah. but I'm, I definitely prefer this because it's a much like more bold look. While we're talking about the tongue, excuse me, uh, halal guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so while we're talking about the tongue though, one thing to note is the color actually is mm -hmm. different uh, of the Jumpman. So the one on my sample pair is actually a black Jumpman and the Jumpman on the uh, retail pair is actually gray. And I didn't, I never knew that. I thought they were exactly the same. And that's weird to me because, like you said, so with the retail pair, it seems like they made some choices to make the shoe more consistent overall. However, if you look at the back of the sneaker on the retail pair, it's black. It's a black Jumpman, whereas the tongue is a gray Jumpman, which I've never seen them use two different colored Jumpmans on a sneaker. So maybe this yeah. gray, I mean, it seems like the gray is the same color as the sock liners. They really, yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. I just prefer the, the black Jumpman's just better looking in my opinion. It matches the laces. It's funny because I, I actually prefer the gray. <laughs> The gray one, only because it, it is that matchingness of the fact that it's, again, more uniform because you have the gray that is exact same color as the sock liner, and the sock liner is so like a dark gray yeah. that the only thing that matches a sock liner in the shoe is the back of the tongue, like the other part of the sock liner. So I think that that is kind of cool that, that they actually use the same sort of thing there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of interesting that, that they're actually different. I didn't right. realize it. I wonder why they went with gray in the sock liner. It's, I, I would have assumed they would have gone with black. Yeah, I honestly, I never really call. took that close of a look at the shoe beforehand, so I didn't know that it was gray. That's a really good but, call too, man. Huh. I have to just do my normal thing where I mention this in every video, but this is an inverted uh, Air Jordan 23 logo right here. So for people that have never seen it and don't understand, that's an inverted 23. Uh, but both of those on these shoes look fairly similar. On my pair, the, the 23 like lines are actually thinner, it looks like, yeah. than on the retail pair. So th this is a little bit more thin. Um, than on the retail pair, which, which is interesting. All right, so if you move your way to the soles, though, they look pretty much identical, except for obviously the yellow toe versus the black toe. Yeah. Um, the Jumpman look the same. There's actually a faint Jumpman under here that you could see underneath the uh, clear soles. One of the first things that we noticed is that the, the color of the actual Nubuck itself, besides just the quality of the Nubuck, is different. So the color on the, uh, on the sample pair seems to be much more vibrant, and I really, really like that. It's got sort of a richer, almost even like deeper yellow, um, and the color on the retail pair, which to be fair, um, each side of my retail pair, the left shoe and the, and the right shoe are a slightly different shade just because I would assume that one of them was being displayed and was sitting out in the sun. But, good fair. right, the, uh, the color of the Nubuck itself is a lot duller than the, uh, the sample pair, which, which you know, uh, I, I prefer like richer, brighter colors. So I think that's why I prefer like all the little accents all over this shoe because it's just like, it seems to be done, you know, with more thought. Like this, obviously, because it's a sample, it's a one-off, so it's like people are taking their time to make it versus a retail where it's just kind of like they're making them not a bunch of them, but a good amount. Yeah, that's yeah. very, very true. The only other difference that I think that we can find on this shoe is the Air Jordan on the back of the tongue. Oh yeah. The stitching is a little bit different and actually it just feels like completely different materials. Like this, on the sample pair, it feels more flush. Like you can't actually feel the stitching around, oh, yeah, you're but right. on the um, retail pair, you can feel the stitching all the way around the square, like a uh, rectangle border of the shoe. But other than that, I mean, I mean, there are fairly small differences that we're kind of nitpicking at to show you guys the differences between the samples and, and the retail pair. But um, other than that, I mean, they, they're they both like pretty incredible shoes. I mean, yeah. we're both really crazy fortunate to own both of these. Like, nice. this is nuts. We're now Tokyo Brothers. Tokyo so Bros. This is pretty amazing. But um, thank you guys for watching the video. And check out Seth Valley's review of the Tokyo Fives over on his channel. Be sure to subscribe over to his channel if you haven't already. Most of you guys probably have. Uh, but uh, you know, I remember when I remember finding your channel when you had like four thousand subscribers, I think, bro. When awesome. when you were at SneakerCon, yeah, York, we were at SneakerCon, yeah. I still had your Fowler Customs T-shirt, bro. Yeah. I wore that in a video of mine, even really like, back in the day. Yep. I, I think and I got comments. I, I screenshotted like, it. People, people are like Fowler Customs. But um, can you actually go into that for one second? What yeah. was Fowler Customs? Or do you actually customize at all? Or what I used to the... customize. Yeah, that's how I started. In two thousand twelve, I started painting shoes. Like I was working. Uh, I, I was in college and I needed like a side income. So it was paint, just painting, like just painting. I used Angelus paint and I would paint. I would customize uh, shoes based on what people wanted, um, and it, it was doing well. But I, I undercharged for the amount of time that I was spending on shoes, so I had to. I just, it just I couldn't balance it with my with my school. Do you think that we'd ever like see an evolution of your channel where you'd actually be show, showcasing or customizing some of your own stuff? Um, 
Not anymore. Uh, I was considering, that's why I named it Fowler Customs, because I was, I was going to do that. Now I'm going to get more into like the actual design issues. I'm thinking about uh, sort of a sneak peek. I'm thinking about doing um, maybe how, the process of, of creating a shoe. So I think that's something I might look into. Cool. Um, but yeah. Well, that's cool, Definitely. man. Well, it's good to know some of the history. But yeah, man. Yeah. Channel's doing phenomenal. It's great to actually see you again in person. Yeah, for sure. It's been since and, uh, 2016. It was like, I think, 300,000 subscribers ago from what, yeah, last time for you. <laughs> it was amazing, bro. Awesome. I, I love to see the growth. So Thanks, man. Uh, sure. But yeah, thank you uh, for uh, joining me on a video. And, of course. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, Sick. absolutely. All right, well, have a good one, guys. Subscribe if you guys want to below and like the video if you guys want to like the video and have a good rest of the day. Peace, guys. Oh,